Hi and welcome to this DCP web tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to install WordPress on your local computer for free. Okay, let's go ahead and open up the web browser. So I'm using Google Chrome, you can use any web browser you like. And inside the search bar here, I'm going to type in Local Pro Flywheel. So this is the site that we need to visit. It's called localwp.com and then the pro for everyone. So when we click on this link, and I'll put a link to this same page in the YouTube description, we can see that um, this software used to have a pro version. So it says premium features used to, uh, used to require a paid subscription. Now everyone can turbocharge their WordPress workflow. So the whole idea here is, is that you can go and learn about WordPress. You can build websites on your local computer without having to have some hosting uh, infrastructure set up. So you can literally build WordPress, WordPress websites on your local computer. So here you can see some like examples of WordPress websites. So let's go ahead and click the download button here. And the next thing it asks me is to select the relevant platform. So I'm on Windows, so I'm going to select Windows and I need to fill out my details here. Okay, after you filled out all your details, just simply click the Get Now button here. The file has already started to download. It's quite a large file, it's around 600 megabytes. So we'll wait for that to download and then we can start the installation process. Okay, the file is completely downloading. So just go to your downloads folder on your computer, but in Google Chrome, you can just go ahead and click on the actual file down here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that to start the installation process. Norton's has already scanned it and it's saying that it's safe to install. So let's minimize this and we can see the installation process and go through all the different steps that are required uh, in order to install the software. So we just have to wait a little bit for it to show us the screen for the installation. So that should be happening now okay let's follow the basic instructions on the screen so first of all it's asking me who can access this i'm just going to save from my local machine just for me on this particular machine so i'm going to click next and it's going to give me the path where it's going to install it i'm just going to leave it as default so we'll click install it's going to prepare and start installing the file okay let's go ahead and click the finish button this option is already ticked and it's saying that it's going to run the software so we'll click finish and it should boot up the software. We should be able to install now WordPress on our local machine. Let's just go through the terms and conditions. We'll agree to those. And it says unable to, uh, is it okay to enable error reporting? So I'm gonna say, I don't really want them to, to log any sort of errors and stuff. I'm gonna say no thank you here. And it, is it okay to use usage? I'm not gonna say no really. I don't really want them to do that. So it says um, meet your new favorite local WordPress de development workflow. So it says unlock more tools. Uh, with a free local account so we can go ahead and create an account it kind of makes sense maybe we should create an account um, and then we can go ahead and learn more so let's just click learn more um, it's got cloud backup install uh, instant reload add-ons live links and link checker add-on so these are some extra features I believe um, that you can add to the website on your local machine if you choose to do so so we can go ahead and select create a free account it's going to take us back to here and we need to just fill out our details create a username and password and then at least we'll have some sort of account running here if we need to download or upgrade the software as well will probably be advisable okay so once you've completed filling in your details click the create your account button here and then it says you need to verify your email so they're going to send you an email you just need to make sure that you verify it uh, in order to gain access to the login if you need it in the future. Okay, so it took about 30 seconds for the email to arrive in my inbox. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click verify email account here. And that should take me back to the website. And now you can see that I'm logged in and so forth. Okay, so we can see at the top of the screen here, we can download the latest version. So if we wanna install a new version of this software, we can go ahead and click this to run through the download and installation process if we need to in the future. Um, there is some support options here and there's like cloud backups. There's an add-on where you can download and store your, your data work or your, your local files on an external source like Google Drive or Dropbox. Maybe we'll look at that a little bit later, but for now let's click on accounts. And when we click on accounts, we can click on this button up here and it says open local. So when we do that and we click the button here, it should open up the software that we've installed. So we can minimize the web browser and this is what the interface looks like. So here you can see create a new site, here you can see get uh, get connected. So basically you can connect, uh, deploy up to five times faster with local connect, simply connect to WP Engine or Flywheel hosting platforms. 
uh, choose a site and then you can basically migrate it from your local computer to the internet but I'm going to show you how to do that in a different way so that you don't have to be you know specifically tied to flywheel or tied to WP engine you may want to host with SiteGround or a different provider then we can show you how to migrate websites from your local computer to this uh, to your hosting platform uh, using some other tools over here we have a blueprint so I haven't really I don't really know too much about this but I guess what are blueprints we can click here and then we can find that a blueprint is a WordPress site package that can include themes plugins configured pages site settings and more with everything pre-installed blueprints let you skip several steps when you set up a site so I assume what we can do is create a site here and then come and then tell this software that that site should become a blueprint just like the nuts and bolts so if it's just WordPress with some specific plugins installed then you can create a blueprint maybe one for e-commerce and one for standard business websites and then that can be your starting point when you create a new project there are some plugins or add-ons here so you can maybe have a look at some of these but like image optimization stuff like this a lot of these sort of things um, there's many other sort of plugins that can do something very very similar um, that you can install so I'll, I'll leave you to go and play around with these but for now I want to go ahead and click on uh, local sites and we'll, let's create a new WordPress website okay let's go ahead and click the create a new site button here let's just maximize this and we'll click uh, create a new site let's click that it's going to ask us what is the name of your site so i'm just going to put in development site one there's some advanced options in here so it's going to be on the this will be the domain for it and this is where it's going to install it in the on our local machine so i think this is fine but you can browse and choose another location and you can rename the url but i think that's going to be fine uh for just demoing uh, the, the software so let's go ahead and click continue and then it it says choose your environment so we're going to use PHP 7.41 uh, and then use this MySQL and running on this web server or you can do custom and then you can select um, Apache or this server here you can select different types of versions of the database and select different versions of PHP so if you're running something more modern up to date then you might select version 8 but we're going to just leave it on the preferred and then we can always go back in here and change the MySQL change the um, PHP version as well and this is probably the better web server out of um, you know uh, Apache uh, of the two types of web servers so let's click continue then it's asking me for a username and a password Right, so we need to put a username and password in here to access this version of WordPress. Okay, let's go ahead and put in a username. We need to enter a password as well, so you can put any password you like, and then you need to put in your email address. It's probably worth putting in your proper email address here, because then if any plugins or any updates or anything needs to be done, then at least this server will send you an email or notification accordingly. You can also do some testing on forms and stuff like that, so it's probably advisable you use an email that you access quite often. Let's go ahead and click add site and we just need to wait for this to provision the relevant services. Okay, let's take a quick look at the interface we can see here. So over here on the left, we will have a list of all the different websites that we've installed. So far, we've been just installed this, uh, this single development site. And here you can see the name of the project. And over here, you can see start site. So if you click that button, it now says stop site. So if your one says stop, you can stop it or start it from up here. So that's just like enabling or disabling this site, right? And if we see over here in the drop down, we can see there's open site, there's open admin dashboard, there's go to site folder. So this one's quite important. When we click on it, um, we can actually go to local site here and we can see development site one here. So that's the name of our project, right? Development site. We can go into app, we can go into public HTML and then in here we can go ahead and uh, go into WP content and then we can see the plugins in the theme directory right so we can access the plugins and themes directory we can manually install plugins and themes or we can do that through the WordPress dashboard let's close down this folder and here we can see open site and shell I'm not too sure about that I don't, I don't normally mess around with that stuff we've got restart and we've got stop the project uh, this particular website so we can restart it stop it we can clone the site can make a copy of it we can export it we can save as a blueprint so if you build a basic website with all the just the basic 
plugins installed then you can save it as a blueprint and then you can have it stored over here and then you can reuse that blueprint to create a new website so if you install woocommerce and you install some plugins and some themes and just have a basic shell running then you can use that to uh, qu quickly create other sites right uh, you can change the domain here so you can click here you can change the url for the domain so if you want to change it to something different you can do that um, and you can go ahead and rename the site so if you want to rename it to something different apart from development site one you can do that here inside this main interface you've got the domain name and you've got the ssl so you need to go ahead and click this trust button so when you click this trust button a black screen might pop up on your computer asking you to accept the the uh, the trust so you can go ahead and click yes and then it will see trusted written here All right so this will allow us to run the website using ssl uh, URL. So you've got the web server, the PHP version, you can switch between PHP versions here, you've got the database and you've got one click admin. So I like this feature and you've got the version of the WordPress and it's not a multi-site, it's just a single site. So if we click on here, um, this allows us to now basically access the WordPress admin control panel without having to log in. So if this is off, we have to put in the username and password we set up in the previous step. If you turn this on, you can just click WordPress admin here and it will access the website. Let's go ahead and click open site. It's going to open it in Google Chrome and you can see the SSO is running. So we've got a secure connection here, which is nice. And if we go ahead and let's just go back to the software, just being a bit lazy here, we can click WP admin and we can go ahead and log into the admin control panel and that's also running the SSL so we can go ahead and see secure connection we can see the certificate and we can see it's valid right so we can run a, a local environment also using SSL I did try and test a few plugins I installed better search and replace and I installed Yoast SEO so those are just some basic plugins that we can install so let's just try one more just to see how it installs from the local machine we'll go ahead and click add new and let's just type in something like uh, recapture right so we can install some sort of recapture plugin just to check it we just do local recapture install it and let's just see if that plugin installs uh, we can activate that and then we've got the local recapture plugin installed and then we can access its settings from here you can see local recapture let's just try a default one that i'll always install anyway contact form and we can install contact form 7 right so that's just a typical uh, contact form software we can activate that as well right so we can activate everything everything seems to be working fine let's just check appearance and here's three different themes this one um, is currently active so let's check the website we can see it all running here let's go to this one and activate it click activate and we can go back and refresh it and we can see we switch themes quite quickly and nice and easily and you can install Elementor you can install anything else that you want any page builders uh, like Divi and so forth and install them on your um, website okay so that all seems to work very very well um, I'm happy that it's running SSL so we can you know build sites correctly do them in the correct way we can go ahead and minimize this if for any reason you finish with your project for the day then I would advise you just click stop site so that would just stop anything from being accessed you can go ahead and close down the software and then you can reboot it and start a new project just by following that procedure so when you load it up again so we just load it one more time you can access your current sites here so we can click dev site and we can start that site right or we can go ahead and click the plus button down here and we can start a whole new project or we can create one from a blueprint so if we close this click here and let's see let's start it first and then we can go ahead and select save as blueprint and then the name of the blueprint let's just call it uh, starter site let's call it starter business site yeah? business site and then we'll click save blueprint it will take a little bit of time but it's going to configure and save all of that configuration you can see it's making copy of all the files um, so that we can reinstall or reuse this blueprint for a future project so once you've got all of your nuts and bolts and all your plugins and everything installed you can go ahead and use this as a blueprint to create a new project you can see the plugins installed and so forth um, so when you click add new local site you can create one from a blueprint 
when you click continue it's going to ask you which ones you want to use so if you get all of your basic plugins installed you get all of your configuration done uh, and set up nicely then you can go ahead and install um, from a blueprint which would save you time having to go and install all those plugins again so let's go ahead and go back to our main directory here we can stop the site stop it and you may need to click this trust button so when you close down the website uh, or you close down this software and you restart the software remember to click this trust button to make sure the sso is running correctly so that's just one thing to know let's go ahead and close this down that's the end of this tutorial showing you how to install wordpress on your local computer for free so we managed to do that all for free the software is free wordpress is free you can probably find some free themes and free plugins and there you go you've got a local running version of a website that you can build for your business or for personal use and then once you're happy and everything is in a good place you can use uh, something like duplicate a plugin to migrate the website or if you're using SiteGround, you can use SiteGround's plugin to do the migration as well that's the end of this tutorial i hope you find it useful and i look forward to seeing you in the next dcp web tutorial